Good day, brothers and sisters. Today, I will be discussing episode 2 on the aftermath of the fall and the unfolding of human history. The root of the fall, a struggle with divine fatherhood, the misunderstanding of God's fatherhood. In his profound work, Crossing the Threshold of Hope, Pope John Paul II offers a compelling interpretation of the root of the fall as a fundamental misunderstanding of the nature of God's fatherhood. This misinterpretation goes beyond disobedience. It reflects a fundamental misapprehension of God's nature and His intentions for His creation. The concept of original sin, therefore, is not just an act of defiance against a specific command, but an existential crisis that signifies humanity's struggle to comprehend and accept the true nature of God's paternal relationship with creation. The Violation of Divine Will Original sin as a violation of the will of God marks a turning point in human history. It signifies a moment where humanity chose a path divergent from God's plan. This pivotal moment is not just about breaking a rule. It is about challenging the very foundation of the relationship between the Creator and the created. This act of rebellion is more than just an error or misstep. It is a deliberate decision to disregard the divine will, leading to a fractured understanding of God's paternal role. The attempt to abolish divine fatherhood. The fall represents an ex existential attempt to abolish the concept of divine fatherhood in seeking autonomy and knowledge beyond their ordained limits, Adam and Eve symbolically reject the paternal care and guidance of God. This rejection is a manifestation of the human desire to self-govern, to be free from divine authority, and to establish an independent identity. This act is a fundamental misreading of God's fatherly love and protection interpreting it as oppressive rather than nurturing. The, di the distortion of divine love. By, by misunderstanding God's fatherly nature, humanity inadvertently distorts the rays of divine love that are meant to nurture and sustain creation. This distortion leads to a skewed perception of God as a tyrannical ruler rather than a loving father. The consequences of this distortion are profound as they redefine the relationship between God and humanity, leading to feelings of oppression, fear, and antagonism towards what is perceived as divine overreach. Humanity's struggle with perceived divine sovereignty this theological perspective casts a new light on the ongoing human struggle with perceived divine sovereignty. The narrative of the fall becomes a metaphor for the human quest for autonomy, a challenge against divine authority, and a search for self-identity outside the realm of God's fatherhood. It reflects the complex dynamics of freedom, obedience, and rebellion that continue to shape human understanding of and relationship with the divine. Conclusion A Lens for Understanding Human History The concept of the fall as a struggle with divine fatherhood offers a rich lens for understanding human history and spirituality. It invites us to reflect on our own perceptions of God's nature and our place within His creation. This narrative challenges us to reconsider our attitudes 
towards divine authority and to re-evaluate our understanding of God's fatherly love, which seeks not to dominate but to guide us towards fulfillment and salvation. Adam and Eve, the aftermath of disobedience, the shattered spiritual communion. The disobedience of Adam and Eve marks a catastrophic shift in their relationship with God. Previously basking in close communion with their Creator, their act of defiance introduces a chasm of spiritual separation. This structure in the relationship with God transcends mere physical distance. It signifies a deep spiritual estrangement. The intimacy and trust that characterize their bond with God are now replaced by feelings of guilt, shame, and fear. This spiritual fracture is a poignant reminder of the delicate nature of obedience and trust in the divine relationship. The Transformation of the Physical World The consequences of the fall extend to the very fabric of creation. The earth, once a haven of abundance and ease, undergoes a drastic transformation. The ground which effortlessly provided for Adam and Eve is now cursed to bear thorns and thistles. This change symbolizes a new reality for humanity, one where survival and sustenance are marred by hardship and labor. The ground becomes a constant reminder of the cost of their disobedience, reflecting the altered relationship between humans and the natural world. The Symbolism of Expulsion from Eden The expulsion from the Garden of Eden carries profound symbolic weight. Eden, a place of perfect harmony and communion with God, now stands as a poignant symbol of a lost ideal, an unreachable paradise. The angel guarding its entrance serves as a stark reminder of the consequences of straying from God's path. This physical barring from Eden mirrors the spiritual barrier that now exists between humanity and God, symbolizing a loss of innocence and the onset of moral and spiritual complexities. The Garden, a lost paradise. The Garden of Eden once a tangible representation of divine love and provision, transformed into a symbol of what humanity has forfeited. It stands as an enduring testament to the paradise that was within reach and is now lost due to disobedience. The image of the garden, lush and thriving, juxtaposed with the harsh reality outside its bounds, serves as a metaphor for the spiritual richness and fulfillment that comes from obedience to God and the, the desolation that ensues from turning away. Conclusion A Story of Lost Intimacy and Hope The narrative of Adam and Eve's fall is not just a tale of punishment. It is a story of lost intimacy and the enduring hope of redemption. Their exile from Eden is a dramatic illustration of the consequences of turning away from God, yet it also sets the stage for the unfolding story of redemption. This narrative invites us to reflect on the fragility of our relationship with the Divine and the profound impact of our choices on our spiritual and physical realities. It is a reminder that though paradise may be lost, the hope of its restoration remains a central promise of the Christian faith. The Human Struggle with Concupiscence Concupiscence, the inward turmoil. The fall of Adam and Eve 
ushers in a profound transformation in the human condition, the emergence of concupiscence. This term encompasses the internal conflict and inclination towards sin that now characterizes the human experience. It is a propensity to prioritize selfish desires and impulses over a life aligned with the divine will. This internal turmoil is not just about a tendency towards specific wrongful acts. It is a deeper, more pervasive inclination that affects every aspect of human life, reflecting the complexity and challenge of human moral existence. The weakened state of human will and intellect. The concept of concupiscence points to a fundamental alteration in the human psyche. The once clear faculties of will and intellect designed to guide humans towards good and away from evil are now clouded and weakened. This debilitation manifests in various ways, a diminished ability to discern right from wrong, a susceptibility to, to temptation, and a propensity to rationalize or excuse moral failings. Humans find themselves in a constant battle, not just with external temptations, but with their inner dispositions and desires. The distrust in divine mercy and goodness. At the core of the struggle with concupiscence lies a deep-seated distrust in God's mercy and goodness. This skepticism is the spiritual inheritance of the fall. A lingering doubt about the benevolence and providence of God. It is a doubt that tempts humans to seek fulfillment outside of God's plan, leading to choices that prioritize self over the divine will. This distrust is not just a theoretical concept. It has practical implications for, for how individuals live their lives and make their choices, often leading them away from the path God has laid out for them. The Universal Challenge of Concupiscence The challenge of concupiscence is not limited to a specific time or place. It is a universal aspect of the human condition. Every person, regardless of culture or era, grapples with this inner propensity towards sin and selfishness. It is a struggle that defines the human journey, a constant effort to align one's will with divine intention. Concupiscence is a reminder of the profound impact of the fall on human nature and the ongoing need for divine grace to overcome these inherent weaknesses. Conclusion A Path of Continual Striving The human struggle with concupiscence is a central theme in the Christian understanding. It is a reminder of the brokenness that characterizes human nature and the constant need for vigilance and effort to overcome these innate tendencies. This struggle is not one of despair, but a call to a continual striving and reliance on divine grace. It is an invitation to engage in lifelong journey of moral and spiritual growth, seeking to align one's life more closely with the divine will and the original intention of a harmonious creation. Population and the Line of Promise The Role of Genealogies in Biblical Narratives In the aftermath of the fall, as humanity starts to spread across the earth, the biblical narrative employs genealogies as a critical tool for storytelling and theological reflection. These genealogies, known as Toledot in Hebrew, are more than simple lists of ancestors. They serve as a bridge connecting different eras and stories 
emphasizing continuity and change over generations. Through these genealogies, the Bible doesn't chronicle human history. It underscores the unfolding of divine plans through human lineage. Genealogies, a reflection of divine promise. Each name in these genealogies carries with it a story and a legacy, contributing to a larger narrative of divine interaction with humanity. They are not just records of biological descent, but a testament to God's ongoing relationship with His people. The Toledot thus becomes a means to trace the line of promise, the divine covenant that threads through human history. This lineage is a reminder of God's faithfulness and the fulfillment of His promises across generations. Understanding Humanity's Evolution Through Toledo As one delves into these genealogies, a picture of humanity's spiritual and moral evolution emerges. These lists provide context to the significant events and figures in biblical history. They allow readers to understand how different characters and their actions fit into a larger divine narrative. The Toledot does not merely record who begat whom. It weaves a complex of it weaves a complex tapestry of human struggles, achievements, and failures under the watchful eye of a providential God. The Significance of Lineage in Hebrew Culture In Hebrew culture, genealogies are a way to assert identity, heritage, and divine purpose. They are a source of pride and a testament to belonging to a particular lineage. This sense of belonging is crucial in understanding the biblical worldview, where one's lineage is not just about ancestral pride, but about being part of a story that is much larger than oneself. It is about being a part of God's chosen people, tasked with a divine mission that spans generations. Conclusion Genealogies as a window to God's plan. In summary, the genealogies in the Bible offer a unique window into understanding God's unfolding plan for humanity. They are a testament to the interconnectedness of human stories and divine purpose. As humanity grows and spreads, these genealogies serve as a reminder of the constant presence of the divine in human affairs, guiding, shaping, and fulfilling His promises through the ages. They are not just a record of human history, but a narrative of divine faithfulness and love woven through the lives of countless generations. On Recreation and Another Fall the flood and its aftermath. We will now explore the profound narratives of recreation and fall in the aftermath of the biblical flood, as depicted in Genesis. These stories are not just ancient tales, but are rich with symbolism and theological insights that have resonated through the ages. God's response to wickedness, the art, God's strategic plan for renewal and Noah's role. The narrative of the flood in the Bible is a profound testament to God's response to the corruption and wickedness that had overtaken the earth. Rather than acting merely in anger, God's plan is one of restoration and renewal for all creation. Central to this divine strategy is the figure of Noah a man of righteousness and integrity in a world marred with moral decay. Noah's selection by God is pivotal. It highlights the Creator's evaluation of righteousness and faithfulness. The ark as a symbol of life 
preservation and continuity. Noah's task to construct the ark is monumental, requiring unwavering faith and commitment. This ark, more than just a physical shelter, symbolizes the preservation of life and the ongoing continuity of God's creation in the face of impending destruction. The gathering of animals into the ark underlines this theme, showcasing the importance of biodiversity and the interconnected wave of life that God has designed. It is a vivid manifestation of God's love and concern, extending beyond humanity to encompass all living creatures. Noah's unwavering obedience and faith. Noah's response to God's command to build the ark, despite its seemingly impossible nature and the skepticism he likely faced, stands as a powerful testament to his extraordinary faith. His active participation in the construction of the ark is an expression of his of this faith. Turning the ark into a beacon of hope amid despair and a symbol of God's mercy, even in judgment. The ark thus transcends its immediate purpose, representing a sanctuary of hope and a tangible sign of God's grace and salvation. The ark's journey as a faith metaphor. The ark's journey upon the waters of the flood is emblematic of a journey of faith, navigating life's storms and uncertainties while buoyed by trust in God's promises. This journey prefigures the concept of the church as a vessel of salvation, navigating believers through worldly challenges towards a new beginning promised by God. Summary the ark as a multifaceted divine narrative. In summary, the story of God's response to wickedness through the ark is a rich multifaceted narrative encompassing themes of judgment, grace, destruction, renewal, and the enduring relationship between God and His creation. It encourages reflection on our faith journeys and our responses to divine calls, especially in challenging times. The ark stands as a symbol of hope and renewal, a constant reminder of the steadfast presence of divine promises in the tumult of life. The number 40, a period of trial and judgment. 40 days of rain, judgment, and transition. In the biblical account of the flood, the number 40 carries a deep symbolic significance. It represents a time of divine judgment against a sinful world, as well as a period of transition leading to a renewed creation. The 40 days and nights of rainfall symbolize not only God's response to the world's wickedness, but also the beginning of a transformational process towards a new beginning. Forty days on Mount Sinai, spiritual preparation and revelation. The theme of forty as a period of trial and moral refinement is also present in the story of Moses on Mount Sinai. Here, Moses spends forty days and nights in communion with God, receiving the Ten Commandments. This period is emblematic of spiritual preparation, during which Moses gains essential insights and laws that would shape the identity and covenant of the Israelite people with God. Jesus says 40 days in the wilderness, testing and spiritual fortification. The New Testament recounts Jesus spending 40 days and nights in the wilderness where he fasts and resists temptations from Satan. This time symbolizes a critical test of Jesus' faith and commitment to his divine mission. 
It is a period of spiritual strengthening, preparing Jesus for his public ministry and demonstrating the power of faith and adherence to God's will. The number 40 as a symbol of testing and moral discernment. Across these narratives, the number 40 recurrently signifies a period of testing where fundamental aspects of faith and character are established and reinforced. Whether it is Noah, Moses, or Jesus, these 40 days represent crucial phases of isolation, reflection and spiritual challenge culminating in significant transformations or revelations. 40 as a symbol of spiritual awakening and growth. In the biblical narrative, the number 40 transcends its literal meaning, embodying themes of judgment, purification, preparation, and spiritual awakening. It serves as a reminder of the importance of trials and transformations in faith, encouraging believers to view their own challenges as opportunities for spiritual development and a deeper understanding of God's intentions. The Covenant with Noah, a Divine Promise The Covenant with Noah, a Divine Assurance to Creation Welcome to our lecture exploring the covenant God establishes with Noah after the flood, a pivotal moment in biblical history. This covenant is not just a mere agreement, it represents God's profound reassurance to humanity and all of creation. Universal Promise and Mercy The first aspect of this covenant is its universality. It is a promise from God that He will never again use a flood to destroy all life on earth. This assurance extends beyond Noah and this immediate family, reaching out to all future generations and encompassing every living creature. This broad scope of the covenant highlights God's endless mercy and His commitment to sustain and nurture life in all its forms. Interconnectedness of Life and Stewardship Remarkably, this covenant includes all living creatures, underscoring the interconnectedness of life and God's comprehensive care for His creation. This inclusion is a call to action for us, emphasizing our responsibility to respect and preserve the environment and all forms of life within it. It reminds us of our role as stewards of the earth, entrusted with the care and protection of all creatures. Symbolic Significance of the Rainbow The rainbow, as the sign of this covenant, carries deep symbolic meaning. Emerging after the storm and the flood, the rainbow is a sign of hope, renewal, and restoration of peace. It serves as a visual testament to God's unwavering faithfulness and this eternal promise to humanity. Its appearance of a rainbow is a reminder of this enduring covenant, reaffirming God's love and hope that prevails even in the face of adversity. A new beginning for humanity. This covenant also signifies a fresh start for humanity. As Noah and his family step out of the ark into a renewed world, this agreement marks a new chapter for human beings, an opportunity to live in harmony with God's will and the natural world. It calls for a reborn rela relationship with God, grounded in trust, obedience, and reverence for the sanctity of His creation. Conclusion The Covenant's Role in Biblical Theology In conclusion, the covenant with Noah is fundamental to biblical theology. It represents God's grace, His unwavering commitment to life in all its diversity, and His unbreakable promise to be present with His creation in a nurturing, responsible, and hopeful relationship. This covenant stands as a testament 
to the death and breath of God's love for His creation, inviting us to embrace our role within this divine promise. The New Fall, the Incident of Noah's Drunkenness The human condition post divine intervention, Noah's Drunkenness Our lecture today focuses on a pivotal but often overlooked episode in the biblical narrative, Noah's drunkenness following the flood. This incident serves as a stark reminder of the persistent human inclination towards imperfection and sin, even in the wake of divine intervention and a fresh start. Vulnerability of the Faithful, Noah's Fallibility In this sobering account, Noah, the man of righteousness, who was favored by God and saved from the deluge, succumbs to inebriation. This act of drunkenness, particularly poignant in the aftermath of the flood, underscores the vulnerability of even the most devout individuals to human frailties. It strikingly illustrates the propensity for moral lapses is an inherent part of human nature, impervious to the cleansing and resetting of the world. The Dynamics of Human Actions and Repercussions The reactions of Noah's sons to his drunken state shed light on the complex dynamics of human actions and their consequences. Ham's disrespectful behavior upon witnessing his father's nakedness is sharply contrasted with Shem and Japheth's dignified and respectful response. Their differing actions result in the cursing of Ham and the blessing of his brothers, symbolizing the profound impact our decisions and behaviors have on our faith and interpersonal relationships. Ongoing struggle with sin and moral choices. This episode vividly put portrays the unending struggle with sin and moral decisions in the human experience. Despite the purification of the earth through the flood and the establishment of a new covenant, the fundamental challenges of morality and ethical decision-making persist. The narrative of Noah's drunkenness acts as a cautionary tale, highlighting the ease with which one can falter and the intricate nature of family dynamics and intergenerational consequences. Individual Accountability and the Ripple Effect of Actions The contrasting behaviors of Noah's sons and their subsequent blessings and curses underscore a recurring biblical theme, individual accountability and the extensive repercussions of our actions. This story reinforces the significant impact our, dis our choices have, not only on our own lives, but also on those around us, often reverberating across generations. Conclusion Reflection on Human Imperfection and Moral Challenges In summary, the story of Noah's drunkenness and its aftermath offers profound insights into human imperfection, the ongoing nature of moral challenges post-redemption, and the complex interplay of actions and consequences. It invites us to reflect on our own vulnerabilities, the importance of wise and respectful decision-making, and the continual need for divine guidance and grace in our relentless struggle with sin and ethical choices. Repopulating the earth, the descendants of Noah. Repopulation after the flood, diversification, and spread of humanity. Welcome to an exploration of the significant phase in biblical history that follows the great flood, the repopulation of the earth. This period is marked by the diversification and spread of different peoples and cultures originating from the lineage of Noah's three sons, Shem, Japheth, and Ham. 
the Semitic lineage, descendants of Shem. The descendants of Shem, also known as Semites, occupy a central role in the biblical narrative. This lineage is the source of key figures in salvation history, including Abraham, who is revered as the patriarch of the Israelites, and Ishmael, traditionally identified as the ancestor of the Arab peoples. The Semitic lineage is particularly crucial in the Old Testament as it traces the Jewish people's roots and their covenantal relationship with God. The shared ancestry of the Israelites and Arabs underscores the intertwined relationships among the Middle Eastern peoples, highlighting both their historical connections and complexities. Japheth's Lineage, Expansion, and Diversity Japheth's descendants are depicted as spreading far and wide, encompassing a, a diverse array of peoples and regions. While Japheth's lineage is often seen as a more peripheral to the central biblical narrative, it plays a significant role in the broader human history depicted in the scriptures. This lineage symbolizes the expansion and diversity of humanity across the globe, contributing to the rich tapestry of cultures and communities that make up our world. Ham's lineage and the Canaanite conflict. The descendants of Ham, particularly through this, his son Canaan, are portrayed in a more contentious light in the biblical account. The Canaanites who inhabited the land promised to the Israelites are often depicted as adversaries in God's plan for His chosen people. His, this enmity is exemplified in various biblical narratives, including the conquest of Canaan under Joshua. The narrative surrounding Ham's lineage, especially the curse, it, placed upon Canaan has been a subject of extensive theological discussion, reflecting the complexities and conflicts inherent in human relationships and the pursuit of divine purposes. Themes of Diversity and Divine Fulfillment The narratives of Noah's descendants and their spread across the earth encapsulate them themes of diversity conflict and the fulfillment of divine promise. Its lineage contributes uniquely to the rich mosaic of human history as depicted in the Bible. These accounts provide a backdrop for understanding the complex interplay of different peoples and cultures, each playing a distinct role in God's interaction with humanity. The repopulation of the earth post-flood is thus more than a tale of survival and proliferation. It is a foundational narrative that sets the stage for much of the unfolding biblical drama in the chapters that follow. Conclusion Lessons from the Flood Narrative In conclusion, the stories of the flood and its aftermath are rich in themes of judgment salvation, covenant, and the persistent struggle with sin. These narratives offer profound insights into God's relationship with His creation and the enduring hope for redemption despite human frailty. They remind us of the importance of grace, obedience, and the consequences of our actions as well as the ever-present possibility of a new beginning with God. The Tower of Babel, Ambition and Divine Intervention Welcome to an insightful lecture on the Tower of Babel as depicted in Genesis chapter 11, a story that holds a profound implication in biblical history and human sociology. Genesis chapter 10, The Table of Nations Our discussion begins with Genesis chapter 10, often referred to as the Table of Nations. This passage 
lists various groups of people existing in ancient times with their identities linked to characters in the genealogies. This chapter provides a backdrop for understanding the diverse and widespread communities that populated the world after the flood, setting the stage for the events at Babel. The Ambition for Renown, the Tower of Babel In Genesis chapter 11, we encountered the story of the Tower of Babel, a narrative rich in symbolism and meaning. The term Shem used in the story means name or renown. The people's declaration, let us make Shem for ourselves, reveals their deep-seated desire for fame and recognition, independent of God. This ambition symbolizes humanity's inclination towards pride and self-glorification, often at the expense of divine acknowledgement. The construction of the tower can be interpreted as an act of collective hubris, an attempt to assert human power and achievement without regard for the divine order. The Significance of Language and the Fall of the Tower the story highlights the impo imposition of a single language by the builders of the tower, which could be interpreted as a metaphor for cultural and political oppression. Their unified language and purpose, while initially a source of strength, become the means of their downfall. In an act of divine intervention, God confuses their language, leading to a breakdown in communication and cooperation. This confusion of tongues and the subsequent scattering of the people symbolize disruption of human arrogance and the limitations of human power. The Tower as a Sigurat, a historical perspective. The Tower of Babel, likely a, a Sigurat, reflects the ancient Mesopotamian architectural style. These structures were significant in their cultural and religious context, often serving as temples or places of worship. The biblical depiction of the tower as a ziggurat adds historical and cultural depth to the narrative, situating the story within the broader context of ancient New Eastern Jerusalem. The line of Shem the chosen people. Finally, the significance of Chem's line in the story is noteworthy. At the genealogy of the chosen people, the descendants of Shem hold the central place in the unfolding of biblical narrative. This lineage leads to the formation of the Israelite nature, pivotal in the history of salvation. The contrast between the ambition of Babel and the chosen line of Shem underscores the biblical theme of divine selection and purpose amidst human endeavors. In conclusion, the story of the Tower of Babel in Genesis chapter 11 is a powerful narrative that speaks to themes of human ambition, divine intervention, and the significance of language and communication. It serves as a cautionary tale about the limits of human pride and the importance of aligning human endeavors with divine will. Thank you for joining us as we delve deep into the profound themes of divine parenthood, faith, and human history through the lenses of the biblical narrative. From the foundational stories of Adam and Eve to the pivotal account of Noah, the flood, and the Tower of Babel, we have explored how misunderstanding God's fatherly nature leads to profound spiritual crisis, yet also how faith and covenant guide us back towards understanding and reconciliation with the divine. In our journey, we have seen the struggle against the divine will, the complexities of human ambition versus God's intention, and the ensuring promise of salvation that threads through generations. As we prepare to continue this exploration in our next episode, focusing on the rich sagas of the patriarchs and the pivotal roles in the unfolding of God's plan, we invite you not to miss a moment of this journey. 
Please, if you have found these insights enriching and are eager to delve deeper into the stories of faith, promise, and divine interaction, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell. This ensures you stay updated with our series, joining us as we unravel more of these timeless narratives and their implication for our understanding of faith, covenant, and divine guidance. Thank you for being part of this exploration. Your engagement and reflection enrich this journey, reminding us of the shared quest for understanding our place within God's grand narrative. Until next time, may your path be guided by faith, enriched by understanding, and illuminated by the enduring light of divine